not much more than, um, as a lot of people say, not much more than clever monkeys. Um, democracy, also, democracy is also a very blunt instrument, but it's the best thing we've come up with. Its, its greatest capacity is to prevent disasters rather than optimising good governance. But so be it, um, Donald Trump excluded. We don't need to make it any more blunt. And I think it's perhaps we should focus on what is Council's job. This isn't the United Nations. This isn't Parliament. This, your job is not to draft legislation, to debate public policy, to dispense national funds, or to be the conscience of the nation. Your job is basically to deliver services and infrastructure to this district. And the stuff around the outside is pretty frilly. And to do that, you need to have the best governance that democracy can produce. The job isn't about representation. It's the mistake everyone makes. The job is about governance. And once you start introducing elements of representation into it more and more, we've already got wards, and I for one would now happily endorse the abolition of wards and the introduction of STV. I think we'd get a better result. But this is going down that track. And bear in mind the job we have to do, you have to do, your ability to do it is becoming increasingly limited. And I'll make the prediction that in my lifetime, there will be significant loss of life in the Eastern Bay of Plenty from flooding. And local government, when it happens, and it will happen, and I'm talking 20 years, I've given myself 20 years, local government should be held accountable. They won't be. Climate change is going to mean that what happened at Matatar will happen on a far bigger scale and there will be loss of life and it won't be very nice. I, I predict that the calibre of our governance in both the regional council and both the regional council and the district council is not high enough to recognise what's happening and do something about it. So do not weaken the level of governance and the standard we have now, enhance it, do the right thing. I can't think of a district in New Zealand that needs this less. You may snigger and laugh. We've got a very diverse population. We've got a very high Maori population. The tools, the tools to do the job are there. To Māori, I say, use them. You are absolutely capable of getting three or four representatives on, and it's happened in the past, and you should be able to do it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Holmes. Haven't finished, sorry, Mr. Mrs. Mayor. The, sit, the last part is a plea to councillors. You do not have a mandate to make this decision today. Be patient. Be true to yourselves when you vote and realise this is a very big move and the end game it's the right is worth waiting for. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Can I now invite uh, Nawaiata to be able to come and share with us? あ、エンドスパイスだ。Kanohegi tika kanohegi tika kore o te ataua ane, ane po hudiatu, kita kukai kore lo.
Yo te agradezco. Que no está tan. Gracias. I am a mother of three. I work in education. I've been a teacher for 20 years um, at Waiuho, at Te Farikura Ruatuki, at Waimana, and recently at Te Kura Huiaro in Ruatahuna. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak on this kaupapa today. Tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, ko tahi te ture mōna iwi e rua, the maxim adopted by Te Uruera Prophet Rua Ke Nana Hepetipa in 1908. I'm going back to go forward here. Yeah. Rua's movement included critical focus on economic and land development, roading, establishing local government systems and structures within Māori communities such as Mauna Pōhatu, Waimana, Yopuki. It also included key networks and relationships across tribal boundaries, such as Te Whakatohia, Te Arawa, Pahipoto, Tūwharetoa, Ngātiawa and others. In 1916, this community at Mauna Pohatu was invaded by Crown forces. Two Iharaira men were shot and killed and six arrested, including Rua, and taken to Mount Eden Jail where they were held for up to eight months without charge. This began the longest trial in New Zealand history at the time. In the end, the jury found Rua guilty of moral resistance. Moral resistance. Since when is moral resistance a crime? On the 21st of December 2019, the Governor-General, Dame Patsy Reddy, signed a royal assent acknowledging the Crown's wrongful invasion and arrest of Rua Kenana. The legislation also acknowledges the ongoing effects of this injustice on the descendants of Mauna Pōhatu through successive generations. These are the facts. This is history. And today's vote is history in the making. Earlier this year, the Honourable Nanaya Mahuta said, Government is supporting councils working to increase representation for Māori and local government by putting in place the same rules to establish Māori boards as general wards for the 2022 local elections. The same rules, not special rules, not separate rules, but the same rules. What are Māori wards to me? Simply, it's the local government version of the seven Māori seats in our parliament. These seats provide a space for the unique perspectives of Māori to be seen, heard and understood. Māori is tanata whenua and equal treaty partners. Benefits I see, for example, nā mihi ki taku whanauna ki a rāwiri waititi o te whanau apanui. Already he has highlighted many significant issues to do with the daily reality experienced by Māori as a result of our lived history. The necktie, it's not just a necktie. In this context, it is symbolic violence. I love that rāwiri is unapologetically Māori and he responds from his heart. Some of the behaviours in our parliamentary chambers are outdated and it's not okay. And knowing what's not okay is the beginning of change. These are small but very significant issues located at the core of our dual reality, citizens of Aotearoa. Ko tahi te ture mō nā iwi e rua, equity. We cannot hear, heal what we will not acknowledge, facts. Māori land confiscation through physical and legal force, being punished for speaking Māori in state schools, imprisoned for practising culture and protecting land, the list goes on. True equity acknowledges our shared history and its resonating effects. True equity is courage to make changes for the better. Māori representation in local government means councils working in partnership with Māori, creating mechanisms that allow for Māori representation and decision making. This is equity. Ko tahi te ture mō nā iwi e rua, equity. As the late Judith Binney said in 2010, if we who live in the present in Aotearoa can discuss our shared history in the 19th and 20th centuries, then we may gain from our past. If we cannot do this, then we will have learnt nothing from our past and we will have exchanged nothing with each other. Today we have an opportunity to make a significant change, I believe for the better. 
Today is an opportunity to send a clear message to our communities of Whakatane and to our future generations. Just yesterday, Hamilton Council voted unanimously for Māori wards. Unanimously. If they can do it, then so can we, Whakatane. And let's make it unanimous. It's time. Thank you, Professor Blake. I have been here for a long time. Nuriya, kai te mihi ki nga kai kore ro katoa ki taku mohi o kumatau toko toru pe hai fakauti te me yahi yahi ki a tichiwa i tatau kai hia tatau e hai Nuriya, te nga tatau katoa Good afternoon Good afternoon ki a tatau katoa and congratulations for bringing this forum together today It's an extremely valuable forum I can't help myself I thought I might I want to acknowledge all of the presenters this afternoon and yourselves, but I want to acknowledge the, the perspective that this is the way forward. We're looking at a way forward here. And the opportunity, the gems and the depth and the origin of ideas and the summaries, the key points brought together by all of the presenters this afternoon, I've got to summarize it in one minute. I think there are the eight key points that came out this afternoon. The first one is the meaning of life. Every speaker, every speaker presented the meaning of life from their perspective. That's the philosophy of life for all of us. All of you sitting there, <coughs> you want to be able to see into the meaning of life. And as part of the meaning of life, there's a second point that's came up, that's come out this afternoon, and that is tikanga and real, the customary and intellectual property rights of all of those who have given their presentations this afternoon. And if we look at the actual legislation itself, part two of that legislation talks about the principles. And the principles mean, in a more broader sense, the inalienable rights of the rights of people to act in the way they are. Every presenter this afternoon gave you evidence. Evidence from Kohanga right through to the lifestyles, to the mountains, to the rivers and the streams. Now for me, I'm a professor of research and development. I teach masters and PhD students. I revise their work, <coughs> I review their work, and I sharpen their work to get over the line. Every speaker this afternoon brought that type of depth to their presentations this afternoon. The most important part of their, their presentation was the evidence. All evidence is absolutely essential in any sense of the word. <coughs> About a month ago, I was at the Takutai Moana hearing, Waitangi Tribunal hearing at Mataatua Marae. One of the key speakers was a professor of law from Canada, and he talked about Aboriginal rights. What you're hearing today is Aboriginal rights connected to the Tiriti of Waitangi connected to whānau, hapu and iwi rights. And the sense that they are talking about, all of the speakers, is intergenerational. Dēnā whakatikurana, dēnā whakatikurana, makes a contribution to the communities that they belong to. <clears throat> the other part about these presentations this afternoon, very empowering. They came from the heart and the soul. They also came from really thinking about the issues of what is the voice. And the title for my presentation this afternoon is The Enduring Voice of Inclusion. They want to be included. All of the presenters want to be. Every presenter this afternoon presented to you a sense of leadership in my view. And the next point they made was continuous learning. They want to learn and they want to come with you and help you to get over the line and help you to learn about these points of perspective of what these wards are for. <clears throat> and the last point, collaboration and partnership. We've got to keep working. 
and let's be more creative. Let's, let's find a, pat, a platform for the creativity of what partnership is. Now, <clears throat> I want to show you a publication. Did you see Thomas? Mata to a Farinui. Every presenter this afternoon is connected to the popo in that whare. There are 57 popo in that whare. You know you worship the mayor. If we thought about it deeply, we could potentially have had our hui at Mātātua whare. And we could have led off with the blue light exhibition. That would bring the councillors and the people together in one voice inside the whare. When I was at the Takutai Moana uh, inquiry, <coughs> The Waitangi Tribunal who chaired the session for the day says, we are in Mata to a Whareinui and we are here in front of all these popo. 58 popo, the voices are behind you and the voices are in front of you. <clears throat> now, if you have a look at page 5 of this publication, there's a photo there of Te Huri Nui Apari. The evidence is telling me that you have a kōhatu down the bottom there, putting in place a memorial of Te Hurinui Apanui. Te Hurinui Apanui's people, who are they? All of the people here. They are the voice of the people. <coughs> you, know, <coughs> you know, the key point, I think, about this afternoon is really looking at what we can do together. <clears throat> and the voice of the people that are presented to you this afternoon. So, one more point, one more point, one more point, one more point. Did you read more Tell us why you did the same to Mr. Hope. She cut his mic. Why is the speaker allowed to carry on? I think it's my mic. Hello. One more point? Okay. <clears throat> The last point I want to make is this, and it's, come, and it's come from page 42 of this publication. It's about the meeting of Joseph Ward and Rua Kemana on the Whakatane Harbour. And these are the words. It became the Mongo uh, Pohatu flag embossed with the words Rua Kemana, Kotahite Ture Monao Iwi Ewa, O Mongo Pohatu. These words allude to the meeting between Rua Kemana and the then Prime Minister Joseph Ward in Whakatane in March 1908. On that occasion, when they discussed the Rua Kena, when they had a discussion, Rua Kena wished to have a separate Māori government. The Prime Minister said there couldn't be two suns in the sky at the one time. Rua Kena replied that there is one sun in the heavens, but it shone on one side, the Pākehā side, <coughs> and it darkened on the Māori side. Rua Kena's flag expressed his wish to see everyone have the same rights under the law. Last point. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> we have a call out for you. We want to get each of the councillors a copy of the uh, books uh, we launched at the symposium. And we have six publications here to get yourself, the wish mayor, from the people of Māori Pohatu and all of the communities that represent Whakatane and Ngātiawa as a gift for you for today. Tēnā tātā
Can I can I just want to make an explanation? I had uh, Professor Black down as a separate speaker on behalf of our Nui Arangi and had anticipated giving him 10 minutes on his own. When they came up together, I was why I was more tolerant with the time because I had allowed more for those two speakers that they came together. So I want to be very clear about why, why that, that tolerance was provided. The stage of the meeting that we are at now. For the meeting now is that um, our general manager is going to present us with the report that goes along with today's meeting regarding um, the voting in principle for Māori wards. Uh, councillors have already received that, so I am taking that it is taking it as read, and I'm now opening for councillors to ask any points of clarification on the report that's been given to the board. Um, we've had quite a few workshops and meetings regarding this, so there may be none, but I just want to check that, that in terms of the report they have before them, was there anything else they wanted to, to query? No? I'm standing to give the speech today and to move that the Whakatane District Council agree in principle to the establishment of Māori wards. I'm standing rather than sitting and have prepared written notes on what I want to say because in my mind this is the most significant opportunity that has come up for consideration in the 11 years that I've been elected onto this council. I won't even acknowledge my husband's here today. He knew how important this was for me today. My, my track record of supporting Māori wards is, is well known, but last time we voted, we did so knowing full well that a poll of a relatively small number of people would undo our decision. This time, thanks to the actions of the Minister of Local Government, the Honourable Nanaia Mahuta, we are no longer constrained by what I feel was a racist provision allowing a binding referendum on this one matter of all those we weigh up and consider as part of any representation review. And I just want to add for the person who suggested that what we were doing had some, was legally vague, that we have, we have had that challenge I have checked and got legal opinion, and I have a copy of that report in my office, if anybody wants to see it, that it is perfectly legal what we are now doing. <laughs> Māori, Māori wards is in law a treaty matter in New Zealand, and the treaty is our main constitutional document, and clearly articulates the relationship between tangata whenua and the Crown, representing all of those who came from time forward and, were, and are still here and are fortunate enough to live in Aotearoa. It's a relatively young treaty covering less than 10 generations and in my lifetime to date, I have personally lived alongside six of those generations from my great grandmother, who was born somewhere in the 1980s, uh, 1880s rather, <laughs> through to my grandchildren today. Sadly, this treaty partnership has had time, at times been subject to disturbing levels of official neglect. While its significance has been re reinforced in recent times, as laws have been updated and added to, and we now have over 40 statutes that contain direct references to the treaty with legal implications, this founding relationship still often is treated as an inconvenient truth Run one, rather than one we value and seek to have reflected in practice. We are one nation made up of two legally recognised identities, Tangata Whenua and Tangata Tiriti. We are subject to one law, but our life expe experiences and values are informed by more than one law. This one's spelled L-O-R-E. We need both a legal and a cultural approach to significant decision making to ensure authentic, widespread well-being. If we treat this decision today before us 
as having our arms twisted up our backs, then we have missed the point. And we have failed to see the opportunity this is, which is to step towards increased participation and improved and more inclusive decision making. If our current central and local government arrangements were serving both Māori and Pākehā on an equal basis, then surely Māori would be less visible in our negative health and social indicators. All of us, every government department, all councils, all community organisations need to own the role that we play in maintaining the outcome gap that exists. Ignorance and naivety no longer count as excuses. In finishing, I want to do three things. Firstly, can I take this moment to congratulate the over 10 councils who in the last few months have voted as part of their representation review to have elected Māori seats at the table. What we are considering today is whether we want to be part of this much needed change. Secondly, I want to make the point that what is being proposed today is not a cure-all in terms of our ongoing relationship with iwi, but it is a starting point that brings us closest, closer to what was intended at the signing of the treaty. And finally, my third point, is that I move, firstly, that the 2021 <coughs> Representation Review and Murray Woods report be received, Secondly, that pursuant to Schedule 1, Part 1, Clause 2.1 of the Local Electoral Act 2001, Council resolves to establish one or more Māori wards for the 2022 and 25 Whakatani District elections. And three, that the Council directs staff to undertake the required statutory process to establish Māori wards as part of Council's representation review. Do I have a second? Seconded, yeah. Councillor Riles. We now move into the debating stage, and I invite Councillor Riles. Would you like to speak as the seconder, or would you want to reserve your right? I reserve my right. Please. May I? Who else would like to speak? Councillor um, Pollock. Thank, thank you, Worship, and uh, welcome everybody, and thank you for your presentations. I wonder if I can invite Dino to stand up and turn around. <laughs> On the so, so on the front of the shirt it says yes to Maori seats. And I absolutely agree that that's where it should be. And I guarantee you that we'll have Maori seats. The unfortunate part about it is that the Act says wards and, and I think that'll be a challenge to you because I think it's too narrow but seats absolutely thank you thank you uh, Madam Mayor I want to take the floor to John Fuller um, you know I've been lucky enough to live in Marata for the last 35 years um, while I've there, I've raised my family as members of the community um, and have been involved in all the community things. Um, I must have over-succeeded because uh, when my oldest daughter uh, went to school, uh, high school in here at Trident for the first time, she came back after her first day and said to me, Dad, the other kids are picking on me. And I said, well, what, why are they picking on you? They say I'm not Māori. But I grew up in Mar university and became a civil engineer. And while she's at university, she started to get homesick. And after six months, she finally worked it out because she saw a Māori in the supermarket and ran up and gave him a hug. <laughs> so I've always believed that we should come together as one person, moving in one direction together. So. I would sort of mediocrely vote for yes for Maori wards, but I've had to change my vote, sorry, because over the last um, two years, as I've been a councillor and as I have um, been lucky enough to be the council representative of the Titeko Resident Association and the Marata Resident Association and every other resident association on the Rangataiki Plains, 
I've learnt a little bit more about where we should be. And that's through to three points. One is, I didn't realise that there's a Māori world view. And that came as a bit of a shock to me. Someone once said, but Gavin, we think differently from you. And I've had to ponder on that thought. The other one is, a little while ago we did a bit of a study as councillors on the Treaty of Waitangi. And um, I'm, I'm a bit thick, but they finally got through to me these two versions. Māori signed one version, and we've always believed in the other version. So that's been a part of my um, thought to vote differently. The third one is, I listened to a TED talk that was done in Auckland by a fellow of uh, the name of um, Tama Iti. And his TED talk was on the Hongi. And, and I will probably butcher what he thought it should mean, but I remember the words, nose to nose, breath to breath. And as I've pondered that in my own self, I've realised that it takes two people to hongi, but when they hongi, they, they breathe together, and you take in part of each other's person. And so as I've gone along, I've butchered a bit more to say nose to nose, breath to breath, heartbeat to heartbeat, shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand, walking together for the future. So if we vote yes, I realise that both, um, both sides of the partnership will need to step up a bit. Those of us in the general ward will have to realise that there is a different worldview from our partners. Those of the Māori wards who step up will have to learn um, to trust us again and to be able to share what is valuable for them so that we can all move forward together nose to nose, breath to breath, heartbeat to heartbeat, shoulder to shoulder in true partnership. So I'm not going to just mediocrely go along with the vote of Māori wards, but I'm going to enthusiastically, strongly and wholeheartedly vote for Māori wards and all that it entails. to speak, but I don't think that I could say anything better than what our presenters, the majority of them, have actually already said today, so I won't take up any more time for that. I um, will say that I will be voting for my rewards, and um, <laughs> can say that I will be doing it very proudly, and I'd also like to say Let's make history and it's time for this. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll bend down a bit for this one. I'm going to hold it up. <laughs> I'd like to thank all the presenters, both for and against. Um, it's always an interesting debate. I've just asked myself three questions. First one is, does Wakatari District Council need good Maori representation? And yes, it does, and it's been lacking for years. Do I think Maori wards will suffice the lack of representation at council level? No, I don't really think it does, and I'm not, I'm not so sure on that one. But the third question was, will Maori wards be detrimental to Wakatari District? And no, it won't be. I, I, I don't think it will be detrimental. So I'm not going to say which way I'm voting. <laughs> um, that's the three questions I've asked myself, and that's the answers I've come up with. Thank you. Tēnā koutou katoa. You all know who I am. My speech is a bit longer than everybody else's, so I'm going to steal some time. Um, 
This is, uh, I'm just going to give you a train of thought, but don't start booing until you get to the punchline. Uh, we operate an essentially British system of democracy that has stood the test of time for more than a century. Although I'm of Italian fucker papa, I have to respect the British for their desire and success in installing peace and good order. Our British style democracy is essentially rooted in an ancient Greek concept. Democracy is government of the people, for the people, by the people. In a true democracy, the people's voice must be heard. We are not a kingdom, a fiefdom, or an authoritarian or um, fascist state. Fakatani District has four wards that delineate geographical areas that are reflective of the different communities that live in those areas. The idea is to achieve representation that reflects the heterogeneous environmental, socio-economic and cultural character of the district. In our system of local democracy, anyone older than 18 years of age can stand for election and vote. Our present system seems fair, at least it seemed fair to me, and that is why, and the reason why is this. Our district has about 45% of people that identify as Māori, and 55% of Pākehā and non-Māori. The last election, at the last election, there were seven mayoral candidates and three had Māori whakapapa. To give a Māori to Pākehā ratio of three over seven. There were 18 candidates for the eight, uh, Whakatani Hopi ward, and at least five had Māori whakapapa. You know the rest of the story. Presently, two out of ten Whakatani district councillors have Māori whakapapa, and I've often heard them advocate for Māori as I have myself. A third Māori candidate narrowly missed out on being ele elected, uh, and we would have had three out of seven. So in my opinion, the present system seems to be working. Well, that was my thinking up until probably recently. Um, I've generally fought to maintain rates at affordable levels for the preservation of the environment, action on climate change, promotion of education and science, health, social justice and harmony. I'm not what you might call spiritual, but rather espouse a science worldview. In this view, everything is related, related to everything else. An action in one part of the system can provoke, provoke a reaction somewhere else. Science has known this for a long time. We depend on each other and the environment, and everything in the environment depends on everything else. We must tread lightly on Mother Earth. My science-based worldview is not significantly different to the stated worldview of Māori, or for that matter, the view of other Indigenous peoples the world over. I prefer to focus on the considerable similarities that exist in, the, in world views and not the differences. For instance, if I had my way, I would exempt rates on unproductive Maori land because it is a, a, a gift to humanity. It should be cherished and looked after. I object to being in the position of having to make this vote on behalf of the community because I do not feel that I've heard sufficiently the voices of all of the people. But I haven't been here that long, as you all know. Um, nor do I think that I sufficiently heard the voice of the Maori community, of the average Maori, but rather the loud voices of a raucous few. We have seen iwi in our district and some have louder voices than others. We have seven iwi and some have louder voices than others. There are for, therefore, I would prefer taking a comprehensive poll of Maori to see where they stand and why it is that they want, what, what, what it is that they want not whether they want wards or not wards. What do they want? Whilst I have been assured by Maori friends that I greatly respect that most Maori want this, I can't help but feel that this is simply repeating mistakes of the past where a few that are not democratically elected purport to represent the many. That is why in a genuine democracy we should all vote. Everyone should vote. I want to know what Maori want in terms of policies and actions. Not just that they want wards because of some prefer, uh, perceived benefits. We have unfortunately become very tribal or partisan in Aotearoa. Folk fall into one of two camps depending on vested interests. The idea of community is being lost. We in local government are an independent authority. We are not here to be the scapegoats of all the whipping boys of central governments. We are here to do the work of the peoples and our communities, I mean all of the people. I also believe it is exceedingly unfair to impose a vote on us councillors without any idea of what the representation might look like should the yes to Māori votes succeed. The past cannot be undone and we must do our best not to repeat the errors of the past. I want to see a unified community, one that is, 
one, one that is split down the middle, and in a con not one that's split down the middle in a constant state of flux. In my opinion, the ability of council to act as an honest partner to EV should not be linked to the issue of wards. They are independent issues. Despite the rational arguments that I've just made against Maori wards, or it see might seem like that to you, constant tension, bickering and whining leads to nothing productive, and that must be stopped. Because of the coincidence of worldviews that I have with what the Maori worldview is, and since I am prepared to give anything a try once, and in the interests of moving forward in peace and harmony, I am prepared to cast my vote in favour of one or more Maori wards. Not all decisions in life are purely rational. I'm, I pride myself on being a rational being, but not all decisions are based, are based on logic and rationality. Sometimes emotions and feelings count. I want you all to look around at the people that are sitting beside you, and I want you to look past the colour of their skin and see that really we are all one race. We are the human race. And if we don't get our acts together, we won't be around for all that long. So we better work together and get, get the job done. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I've come here today and I've gone and grabbed some money. And this is something that everybody seems to want or enjoy, but I've grabbed this as a prop. And the prop is, we have got a face in the front of all of our notes of someone who's very important to New Zealand. And so we've got Ed Hillary on the $5,000 note. He climbed to the top of a big hill and he was first. I'm going to skip over the $20 bill because that's the Queen of England and uh, we're all supposed to aspire to her and she's a nice lady. <laughs> I couldn't get a $100 bill. According to uh, the uh, powers that be, it's, uh, criminals tend to hold them in their back closets, so uh, I haven't got a $100 bill. But I do have a $10 bill and that's Kate Shepherd. And her claim to fame in New Zealand is that she uh, got the right for women to vote. She changed the world. Half of the world were female and they could not vote and she changed the world. <coughs> the £50 dollar note has got um, Papiana Nata. Now he is a politician that was swinging around the uh, parliament in the 1930s and he was different. Believe it or not, he's the sixth longest standing member of parliament. 38 years. He did two years more than Winston Peters and pipped him by two points on the chart. So this guy is someone who's been very, very important to New Zealand. And he promoted the Maori Land Court. It's not the Land Court, it's the Maori Land Court. Why Maori? He did a lot of work to go and promote the rights of Maori, to go and get things back into school and that we had to go and respect that Maori were important. And he also mobilised Maori to get together and go across to World War II. And he said in, the, in our conversation, well, we had a workshop here, he said that if we want Maori to be respected into New Zealand, they have to, we have to stand side by side with Pākehā. And Maori went to the war, and they died just as we died. Or Pākehā, I didn't die. And so the, the reality is that we have had partnerships here in the past. Now, this gentleman died in 1950. And since 1950, if I go and look through the books, the only thing that's really changed in that time is the Treaty of Waitangi Tribunal. And all of the things that he strived for, for Maori, had been lost. And we're not getting it back. And Maori is overrepresented in, in all the bad spaces that we talk about. And so we get back to colonialism. And we have a colonial democracy. And the colonial democracy in this chamber today says, Six beats five. It's not a team result, it's six beats five. Now, Cindy, she went through the legislation, and the legislation is quite clear for those who haven't followed the plot. 34% of our community is Maori, and 34% of the seats that will sit around this table will be Maori. And then we come up against this democracy again, two potentially will be Pākehā, and one will be Maori. Colonial democracy says two beats one. Well, it's much better than three beats zero. So, in that rationale, 
Hamlin Mary Seats actually does level the playing field just a little bit. I'm an RMA commissioner. I have to go and test my decisions against part two of the Act, which is Treaty of Waitangi and Māori Tanga and things like that. And Māori have got a different world view. Um, two triennia ago, we were all regimentally seated in one place in the council and we had to stay there for three years. And on my right hand side is Perodo. And Perodo um, was quite enlightening. Um, he gave me some of his world views on how Māori saw the world and how Māori see the world differently. I was very grateful that he would translate his speeches into English because I am an ignorant party out of the Māori language. And I apologise for that, but the reality is that Māori do think differently and they don't think badly. They're not going to break the world. It's not going to stop and they're not going to spin off. So I think that having um, Māori at the table would at least rebalance some of this inequity. I don't think that it's going to radically change the world. And I sincerely hope that we will be working together and instead of having two voices, one Pākehā and one Māori, we'll have one united voice, which is New Zealander. And I, I would be really pleased to be able to come here in five years' time as a member or watch the members here, and they can turn to the left and they can turn to the right, and they don't see a Māori or a Pākehā, they see a partner. So I'll be voting for this today. <laughs> Councillor <laughs> Nga iwi katoa o te rohe o whakatane, te kaunihera o whakatane, tēnā koutou. Kuia mā, kroa mā, koutou katoa, no mai haere mai. Nga kai a te rangatira he kōrero. I want to acknowledge Tony Boynton and Dan A. Lee, especially from te rōpū tautoko Māori for the mahi, because as has been said, the legislation was changed to allow this council to make a decision and for that decision to stick. And it's through the, work, uh, through the mahi, not just of Tony and Dane, there was many people around the country and the minister herself, but I want to acknowledge the mahi to lobby the minister uh, to get that legislative change because it gives us now the ability to make this decision. Um, we've heard very moving quarter or today. Uh, we've heard accounts about the special treatment that Māori receive at the hands of the Crown uh, in, in health and in housing and the justice system. Uh, and just lately the news coming out about the inquiry into abuse in state institutions I think just brings home just how, <coughs> just how um, terrible some of that special treatment has been. Uh, and I think it's summed up, someone spoke about how their children walk, walk in two worlds and they're mindful of those who don't have to think about which world they're work, walking in because the world is built for them and by them. And I th to me, that was a really point, poignant summary of the, of the state of things. Mm. So we're here to vote about Māori wards. Will it solve those problems? No, it won't. Will it solve problems of marginalisation, dispossession? No, it won't. Will it provide tino ranga tiratanga for for hapu in our rohe? No, it won't. Um, I wasn't even sure it was a treaty matter, actually, when I started to think about it. But I think it is a treaty matter. It's not about tino ranga tira tanga. Uh, as Leif Koma said, this, it's a step. It's a small step. But if anything, for me, it's a treaty matter because it's an Article 3 right, not an Article 2 right. And I think that's important to, to acknowledge. Um, and I've got to say that, as is typical for most issues relating to the treaty, most of the benefits actually go to non-Māori, as with the treaty itself, because it's the treaty that gave us the right to be in this land in the first place. And I feel very blessed to be able to live in Aotearoa, and, uh, and, and my right to be here is based on tertility. So, in my opinion, the main beneficiaries of Māori wards actually won't be Māori, it will be our council. That's who's going to benefit the most 
from having Māori representation sitting around this table. Because what it will mean is better decision making. In a, in a group like this, we, we're a fairly diverse group. We have differences of opinion, we debate, we disagree on some things, we agree on some things and we make our decisions. But what is consistently lacking is a Māori worldview represented around this table. And to have that here will make our decisions better. It will make our discussions better. And um, Colin Holmes talked about, our oh, council's all about technical decisions and infrastructure, and he mentioned matata. And I think, well, if we'd listened to Māori, we probably wouldn't have built in the, that fan head in the first place. <laughs> I don't want to romanticise Māori. You know, Māori are people just like everyone. And as has been mentioned, we have had people on this council with Māori whakapapa, but we do right now. And actually, it's interesting because people often refer to Russell Orr as having Māori whakapapa. And I think, you know, uh, <laughs> how can I say this politely? <laughs> Russell Orr did not represent a Māori worldview, right, around this council table. It's not just about whakapapa, it's about the worldview and the perspective that, that is brought. And speakers have talked about the intergenerational uh, perspective that comes with a Māori worldview. The holistic worldview. And Tony, I think, had some really poignant words around speaking for the wind and the sea and the whenua. And that's what we're talking about. It's not just a whakapapa issue. It's, a, it's, it's the whole being that is brought. Two talks about better links to our population, and, and it's true. If there's one place that needs Māori wards, it's Whakatane District. We have an enormous, you know, almost half of our population is Māori, and to have clear conduits to the Māori community is critical if we're going to be good decision makers. And it's about bringing community together. As someone said, you know, that this is the opportunity for togetherness that has never been felt here before. And that's the powerful thing, because if we look at the challenges facing us today, climate change, ecological degradation, social dislocation, economic breakdown, COVID is just a taste of what we're dealing with. And if we're not able to come together as different communities, we're not one community, we're different communities, but we have to come together with some unified priorities and perspectives. And this, I think, offers us a step towards that. It's not the journey, but it's a step towards it. So to me, it's about better democracy. Uh, someone mentioned a government agenda to destabilise colonial demo democratic systems. And I kind of think, um, I'm sure that's news to the government. <laughs> but the thing is, the system's worked for colonists. It's worked for colonists, but it hasn't worked for everyone. And to me, this is about our journey as a nation to find a better democracy. The Westminster system has its pros and cons, but what we need in this country is a kind of democracy, a participatory democracy that is, marries the best of Westminster traditions and indigenous Māori traditions, democratic traditions, to a participatory kind of democracy that grows out of the very land that we stand on. And again, this is not that, but it's a step towards that. So I'm really, I'm really proud I actually spoke on behalf of the Bay of Plenty Māori, uh, Bay of Plenty, Reg uh, Bay of Plenty Regional Council Māori Seats Empowering Bill. Uh, when that came through Parliament, Mitsuriri Nui introduced it. I spoke for the Green Party on that occasion. I was very proud to support it. Um, tipene Toi, you owe me a bit of a favour there, I think. <laughs> Call them in. Call them in. So I was proud to support that. I'm really so proud to support this decision today to establish Māori wards for the Whakatāne District Council and to join that, what, 25-odd other councils or something that have voted in favour around this country. There is a tidal change. There's a tidal shift happening in Aotearoa, and we can be part of it. And I'm confident this is going to pass today. And like others have said, I would love to see it as a unanimous decision. Tēnā <laughs> Councillor Silcock. Thank you, Madam Chair. Kia ora. Uh, 
Tena Koto Kato. Firstly, a meeting to the speakers who have come today. As the responsibility of care and due diligence as an elected member, I'd like to thank all those who have taken the time to talk to me and express their thoughts and feelings on the Maori ward vote. For um, those that do not know me and one speaker that appears not to know me, I would like to say that having lived and raised my family um, in the Murupara Galatea ward for over 40 years, teaching, volunteering, um, beside many within this rohi, that I have walked beside, I would like to thank um, everybody within that district and representing that district here, I have hopefully given the views that are needed. Um, and lastly, I'd like to say that my mentor that sadly passed two years ago, I've missed his wisdom on this. Kia Tēnā koutou ngai kai kōrero katoa i whakaputa e a koutou reo o koutou whakaaro o tēnei rā. Thank you to everyone for your thoughts and your voice today. Ina i te taha o te tōku whaia. Ko aotu i te waka, ko rua pai i te maunga, ko whanganu i te awa, ko ngāti haua, ngā wāraki me tūwhari tō oku iwi. Uh, ko putu ki toku marae. Hei o i te tipu ki te kaorau, kaore au i mohi o taku whakapapa, noa tai mai te turi te kautau. Kei te hurahi mo te reo, uh, me te ao Māori. So I just introduced myself with my whakapapa, and yes, I'm happy to proud the whakapapa, but my iwi and my my ancestors are from the Monganui region. I didn't grow up on a marae, I didn't grow up with tikanga. And I don't, I don't say that I sit around this table representing the Māori view, but I am learning. And I think that I, what I bring to this table is a, a business view of the world, an environmental view of the world, and a social well-being. And I really hope that um, with Māori wards passing that those other candidates coming to sit around the table will also bring those other views. I'm um, also hoping it's going to be unanimous. And the last part that I just wanted to think about, say, was he whakatau nui tēnei mō te tātou ki te ngana mata, ki a rite o tātou hāpori ki te panone. Me mahi tahi tātou mō te oranga o katoa. Mō tēnei take ka puti au ai Mōngā Māori so, This is a very important decision. Um, it's our community is ready for change and we should all work together for the well-being of everyone. So I vote yes. Finally, Councillor Ives. Thank you, Your Worship. Wow, what an articulate speakers we have sitting around the benches. <laughs> Firstly, I would just like to acknowledge the Kuria, Komatua, and the presenters here today. The positive speakers um, on this auspicious day is something that I guess when I first came into council in 2004, representing the Waimana Taniatu Award. I, like Councillor Imic Kinfokapapa to two iwi, two iwi which unfortunately are outside of this district. I consider myself also a bit like Councillor Imic. I can walk in both worlds. And I have worked, lived and played in this world since the early 80s in the little township of Waimana where I farmed.
I'd like to... I guess that my, my heart and my soul has been in Whakatane, the district, the Waida Bay of Plenty, since a young fellow when I first holidayed here in the 1960s on an uncle's farm. And it was all my, always my desire to get back down here to farm. Little did I know that I would end up, well, as only one of the, well, the last standing 2004 um, intake of councillors. But before I go any further, I will just um, stop Councillor Van Beacon's tracks. He'll say, yes, but you're also an, uh, a recycled councillor. <laughs> and I've got one sitting in the room right in the front row, David Dowd, who came back into council with me in 2010. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> what I would really like to say is I fully reiterate the corridor that uh, Mayor Judy Turner put forward at the beginning. I respectfully ask my fellow councillors to unanimously support the establishment of Maori wards. It has been a long time coming to this momentous occasion by the Whakatane District Council. Puritata. Thank you, thank you councillors. And so uh, now we come to that moment where we uh, removed and seconded. And so I now put it to the vote. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Kevin, so, um, could we just call a division just so it can clearly be shown from yes, how right. everyone has spoken that it is unanimous. If we don't do that, then it won't be recorded as Kevin. unanimous. No, that's oh. very good. So, okay, so I'm going to put it to the vote now. Um, and with a show of hands so that we can count, all those in favour of the uh, provision of Māori Woods, please say, I raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you, councillors. I feel very emotional. <laughs>
Amen.